Hey, as you might know, there are only three big things that can stop you from making a successful game, in my opinion. Three big filters. I've talked about those in this video that I'm gonna link right there. The first big filter is finishing your game. If you don't finish your game, then you're not gonna make a successful game, as easy as that. And I think I have found a new way to pass that filter, to finish my games more easily from now on, especially for longer projects. And if you have struggled with finishing longer projects in the past, then I think you will appreciate this. What if you just finish your game every three months? Yeah, I think finishing the full scope of Will You Snail will take about one or two years, but why don't I just finish the game in three months? It would probably be pretty short, it would be lacking a lot of features that I ideally would like to have, but at the very least I would have a releasable version of the game. And after that I can still expand it another three months. And after that I can still go another three months. So what I'm suggesting is finishing your game multiple times with different scopes. The way I imagine this would work is by selecting a part of your game that could resemble a finished product and then just finishing that first. That should still allow you to keep expanding your game later on, but the risk of not being able to finish it should be highly reduced. The underlying idea being that you keep your game as close as possible to a finished product at any time. My initial plan for Will You Snail was to create at least a 5 hour experience, but hey let's scrap that, let's do a 1 hour experience instead, but it will still have all of the important features a final game needs, a tutorial, a boss fight, it will even tell a story, so it will basically be a finished game. After that I can reevaluate, and if I want I just expand the scope and go another round. In the case of Will You Snail that would mean adding more content, more levels and more story details. And I'm thinking are there any downsides to this? I mean, okay maybe it's making me a little more inefficient, maybe maybe it's a little, a little more stressful, I don't know. But yeah, I mean the stress is probably even an upside, it puts that stress on to get something done in those three months to actually finish your game in a way that you're actually that you would be happy with releasing it. You don't have to release it after three months, but you could. Something that's two years away feels like something that's super far away and something you don't even have to worry about. You still have a lot of time, so no need to get super productive, right? Whereas three months? You better get going if you want to reach that deadline. It feels way closer, it feels way more immediate. You might be familiar with Parkinson's law, work expands so as to fill the time available for its completion. So basically the more time you give a task, the longer it will take. The gameplay you see right here is from the Will You Snail Winter demo, which I finished within just two weeks, which was way faster than I expected. And I think the reason why I could finish it so quickly was because I just had two weeks, there was no more time. I had to finish it before Christmas. So I guess one more reason to give yourself less time than you would like to have. It's probably a good idea to plan this all out, so here I made a little plan for the next three months. And I think it's cool to have like one main task you want to accomplish every single day. These milestones are the first things I placed, obviously, and then I've got to just gotta fill in the stuff in between. So definitely always include a bit of buffer time because things are almost always gonna take a bit longer than you think and also playtesting and bug fixing is important as well. And then here is where I'll decide what to do next. Here I'll have a finished game, a finished version of Will You Snail and then I'll decide will I keep it at that or will I keep extending the game even further. So you have these awesome re-evaluation points and you also have a finished game which means you can let a lot of people playtest it. That should make it very easy to decide whether you want to continue working on it and if yes what exactly it needs to become a better game. You obviously also don't need to do three months, you can also do one month, whatever. Just finish your game multiple times. If you want to make a game in two weeks for example then you might want to split it into one week and one week. So you finish the entire game in one week and then you finish it again in the second week with even more content and making it even better. So I've already started with this schedule more or less, I already completed the first task and I think it feels great to work towards something like that. Building a big game is like building a skyscraper. There are two ways to build a skyscraper. The first one is storage by storage from the bottom to the top, which I would argue is the reasonable choice to make. Or you build the building from the left to the right, all storages at once. Which unfortunately is what I've been doing in the past and what a lot of other game developers seem to be doing as well. The problem with this approach is that if you have to abandon the project or you decide to quit during development, you're left off with an unfinished building and nobody's ever gonna live in that. If you had invested the same amount of energy into building a skyscraper storage by storage, you would have a finished building by now. Even if you quit halfway through the building process, people should still be able to move in and I want to start building my games like this and stop building them like this. I mean for some games that might 
actually not work. Maybe for some games this is not possible, where the development cycles are too long, where there are a lot of complicated steps you have to go through, where you first have to set up your engine, your net code or whatever. But for a simple game like Will You Snell, I feel like there's absolutely nothing speaking against that method. Just finish the game in three months. So I'll finish Will You Snail at the end of March, basically. I'll have a finished game and after that I can decide do I want to release it or do I want to keep going and likely I'll keep going but at the very least I'll have a backup. If I want to quit then hey at the very least I've got a finished game. So I think that's something that can definitely help you to get past that first filter, getting past that finishing it can certainly be painful to turn your great ambitious project into something way, way smaller, to do what basically feels like crippling your main vision of the game. So keep in mind that you're not giving up on your vision, you're just approaching it step by step. Just for the time being, it means you have to eat the bullet and you might even have to cut a couple of your favorite features from the game. Um, I see only upsides and no downsides. For example, it'll be easier to tell if the game's actually good. You can test if it's running on all machines. It motivates you to release something. It pushes you to your limits. It uh, gives you something to work towards. It makes sure you'll finish your game more easily. And all of that comes at the cost of maybe a couple of percentages of efficiency. I think that trade is absolutely worth it for simple games like Will You Snail if you're making a simple 2D game or anything like that. Finish your game in the next three months and then you can still add another three months. <laughs> and another three and another three if you feel like it. But at the very least set that goal to have a releasable game after three months. Shorter development cycles, hell yeah, I love it. I love that idea, I'm definitely gonna try that for Will You Snail. Um, maybe consider trying that as well. Or let me know what you think about that idea. I think it's a 